Right, we're back with uh, more teleprinter goodness. Um, we're not sure exactly what we're doing today. Um, we are kind of splitting our tasks up a bit, I think. Um, so I'm going to look at the receiver unit, maybe the motor, probably more focusing on kind of all of this receiver mechanism that's, um, yeah, I'm not going to show you now, but like it's working pretty well, but it's still a little bit grubby, might, you know, so I'm, I'm going to have a bit more of a look around that. Um, and Paul is going to look at, I love the kind of just spinning around into view, uh, um, look at the transmitter unit, which we worked on last time. Uh, but his first task is getting his computer set up with the Arduino IDE because what he's hoping to do is um, maybe use some of these many, many opto isolator chips that he's brought in uh, to wire up a circuit so that we can maybe decode some signals. We're not going to get like, like, oh, you press the letter D because we're not going to be running it at the right speed. But maybe if we can get to a point where we can encode, uh, we can detect a mark and a space, that'll be the first step towards getting some electronics and software that can decode the signals coming from this. So that's Paul's task for the day. And we'll check in and uh, keep you appraised of our progress. You join us midway through dismantling, or maybe at the end of dismantling and just before some uh, assembly. So yeah, like there's lots gone from the receiver unit. Um, I think the uh, first thing to come off was the this big uh, electromagnet, which is what receives the incoming signal and toggles back and forth. And so that kind of just yeah bolts in here quite nicely. Um, there's this whole assembly here, which did sit kind of something like that. Uh, and this dangling weight is the auto power off, which normally would get winched up and would flick this switch, which is the on off switch. Uh, and yeah, like that's just given a lot more access to to be able to get in and kind of clean all these different bits and pieces so I've been yeah just going through and, and giving everything a bit of a bit of a tidy up um, and yeah it all seems to be running like nice and smoothly so uh, I don't think it needs too much attention which is good because it's all getting super complicated now as to exactly what we dismantle so um, yeah I think I'm going to do a bit of Bit of oiling things just to make sure it all flows really smoothly. Um, there's like some really nice, like this little reservoir here. It's just really satisfying kind of click as this flips up so you can pour oil in there to then get distributed around a bowl, bunch of stuff. Um, I don't know if you can see down in the gap there, but there's just a load of little tiny dots that I haven't cleaned out yet because they're old um let me see if i can find a screwdriver to kind of point at them a bit yeah like these little dots here are little tiny um leftovers from punch tapes that have been fed through nearby i think this hasn't got any punch tape capabilities on it but uh it was probably in a room with a whole load of punch tapes and it would appear that those little tiny dots of paper get everywhere um, <laughs> And so in the bits that are harder to get to to clean, we've still got some from uh, whenever this was all last used. So yeah, next step, bit of tidying it up and, uh, and reassembly before I forget how it all goes back together. So today, uh, part of the uh, restoration project involved removing the uh, electromagnet from the uh, uh, receiver side of the teleprinter. It normally well, it should be sitting here, making contact with these uh, terminals. And its job is to push and pull the horizontal, or this mechanism, which either, which moves this horizontal bar in line or out of line from the hammer which selects the five levers which are the combination of the letter that's been sent. 
So, uh, to test the electromagnet, we have a power supply set to, at the moment, set to 30 volts, or just about. I can fine tune that up a bit. Um, it's, I think it's rated, is it rated at 60 volts? I think it's 60 volts plus 80, I think is oh, what 80, we'd... right, okay. Um, but with the power supply set to 30 volts, and we make contact directly to the pins where it, um, uh, where it normally sits down in, in place, and applying the power should move the, uh, this bar at the top. I will demonstrate now, and in reverse. as it does at 30 volts and we can reduce the voltage as we have found it to work as low as about six volts and even at six volts it's still oh that one doesn't do it that must be just on the boundary of its um uh Demo mode of its <laughs> There we go. Yeah, we're good at six volts, five volts. And it just, I can hear it trying, but five volts is just too low. So I think that is a good indicator of um, that we could that we should be able to get away with running the uh, electromagnet at 24 volts, which we thought should be possible. With um, is it 30 something volts the the rating of the H bridge driver, something like that. So it's looking good. Excellent. We have a reassembled uh, receiver unit. Obviously you saw uh, how Paul had got the solenoid, which is now mounted back. So, you know, this was flicking from side to side. Um, and so that's, yeah, all reassembled now. It's all kind of a lot cleaner over here and seems to be running kind of nicely and smoothly now. Um, and the other big thing, so this assembly that I'd re removed um, and hadn't cleaned up last time I was giving an update and it seemed like it was jammed because it just didn't seem to, you know, like it would, you know, spin around but it didn't seem to do anything and then, I don't know if you can see the um, cogs moving the shaft at all, there's like a screwdrive um on on this main shaft which drives this little drive shaft here but it's like super geared down and then that drives another shaft which is even like uh, that comes up vertically to here which is even more geared down and like that then drives this one which will eventually lift this up which is what lifts this weight so here if you can see the weight will get lifted up is that gonna work yeah, and then it would <clears throat> eventually it would come up and pull the switch off. Um, and that just all seemed quite jammed. And now it seems to be running much more smoothly, which is good. Not quite as smoothly as it was a minute ago before I was on camera, but you know, that's always the way. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of running much nicer now. Um, I think the receiver is kind of coming along quite nicely. Uh, next next time, I guess, this side of the receiver hasn't really had any uh, cleaning and stuff yet, um, or not any kind of in-depth, so we might take the motor off to kind of have a look at that finally, and that'll let us get at this side and give that a good clean, and then, and then it'll be, yeah, more electrical, I guess. Um, one thing we did find, Paul spotted that 
there's this little cover here that's held on with two just two screws and when we take that off and that appears to be uh, something that lets us choose between the two different uh, voltages so uh, so that was another final interesting discovery of the day uh, so yeah like I think we might we might be getting to the point where we can't put off doing some stuff with the motor any longer but uh, yeah we'll see yeah join us next time when we find a reason why we do need to put off playing with the motor again but uh, yeah some good progress today